Our second speaker tonight is the multifaceted Kathy Connolly, the essential Kathy Connolly, the uncut Kathy Connolly. <laughs> Kathy earned a PhD and law degree in the 1990s before moving to Laramie 21 years ago to join the UW faculty, which means you got your law degree when you were 10. Today, she's the director of UW's Gender and Women's Studies program. She's served in the Wyoming House of Representative for the Representatives for the past five years as a voice for progressive concerns. She's the mother of Lucas, a stand-up comedian in New York, and she has recently tipped her toes into the frigid Wyoming waters with her new kayak. I can tell you from personal experience, she is a brilliant cook. She's an almost equally brilliant bridge player. And she wants you to know that while most people think she's a hard-nosed UW faculty member, department head, and legislator, deep down, she's a bona fide romantic. She is. She is. I, this woman. And her talk today is marriage anxiety and DOMA. All right. Do I have to tell you that I really didn't write all that? <laughs> OK. I've been obsessed with marriage for a while now, especially this summer. Earlier this month, my friends Carolyn and Doug got married. I spent my summer planning and prepping and cooking the food for the wedding's dinner feast. It made me inordinately happy. Aren't they adorable? <laughs> my obsession wasn't just the wedding, though. True confessions here. Every Sunday, I read the New York Times. And before the front page or the book reviews or even the Ken Ken, I read the New York Times style section. I pore over the wedding announcements. I categorize them in different ways, but I always loudly announce to Julie, my girlfriend, the number of same-sex couples that have married that week and who's the cutest. Now, typically, she grabs a paper from me and she disagrees with my cutometer, but more disturbing is that we can't do this daily. There are no cute gay newlyweds wearing cowboy boots and pink cowboy hats or brown and gold wedding tattoos that we could argue over in the Laramie Boomerang. Same-sex couples have existed forever. We're not new. But until recently, we've not been able to marry in the eyes of the law. The marriage equality movement be began in the U.S. only recently. In 1993, Hawaii came in within a hair's breadth of allowing same-sex couples to legally marry. In the end, it didn't happen. But just the thought of a happily married same-sex couple caused the U.S. Congress such agony that they passed a horrendous piece of legislation called the Defense of Marriage Act, also known as DOMA. This law said two things. First, that for federal purposes, marriage is only between a man and a woman. And second, that states need not recognize valid marriages from other states or countries if the couple happened to be gay. Despite being a serious insult to queer folks and our allies, as well as a concrete example of national homophobia, for almost a decade, DOMA was pretty meaningless, as no state permitted same-sex couples to, to marry. But in 2003, Massachusetts became the first. And today, Massachusetts is joined by 13 other states, the District of Columbia, and countries all over the globe. You can marry your same-sex partner, and you and your honey are granted the same rights, duties, and obligations as if you had married your head honey. So, not surprisingly, DOMA has now caused an enormous number of problems. In one case, a little old lady named Edith Windsor, you just saw her and you see her hair, was left with a huge tax burden after the death of her wife, Thea, who had been her life partner for 40 years. If Edith's lover had been a man, no such tax burdens would have existed. In another case, married military veterans in Massachusetts were told that because of DOMA, they couldn't have adjoining cemetery plots. Can you imagine the insult? These are ugly situations in just the tip of the iceberg. These cases went to the Supreme Court, and in general, the plaintiffs asked, what's up with DOMA? So after impassioned arguments, and in all honesty, adding to my summer marriage obsession, on June 26th of this year, the US Supreme Court struck down that first ugly part of DOMA and decreed that the US government cannot treat legally married couples differently. No, it cannot. But the court said nothing about part two of DOMA, whether states like Wyoming without marriage equality need recognize valid marriages from other states or countries, 
and it really said nothing about or definitive about states continuing to bar same-sex couples from marrying. So while the Supreme Court decision in June was a wild victory for a moment, the Supreme Court and the feds are not done at all. And states like Wyoming, we have a long way to go as well. There's a lot to do, and we need to do it. Not to do so is just wrong. It's about commitment and compassion, rights and respect, and in all honesty, the simplicity of letting folks go through life without worrying about the issues, legal or otherwise, that may arise as the result of the gender identity of your honey. It's about the meaning of love. It's that simple. The work, though, is hard. And we need to do it in lots of ways, legislatively, in our churches and homes, in our schools and jobs, and in everyday life. And here's one that recently happened. A week before Carolyn and Doug got married, our friends, also a lesbian couple, sent out a picture. In Fort Collins, they had just found the perfect wedding rings. You just saw them. Then the two of them stood in the streets and professed their love to each other. And then Carolyn and Doug, at their wedding, presented Carolyn's bouquet to Teresa and Glessy. And everyone in the room, teary-eyed, applauded the love of not only those wonderful newlyweds and their gesture, but also the love of Teresa and Glessy and the acknowledgement of what else needs to be done. Thank you. <laughs>